Also, this just got uploaded seven minutes ago, by the way. A Diablo 4 into the end game. We are on it. Oh god, that's loud. We're really excited about getting this game into players' hands and letting them experience this massive world. A main cornerstone of D4 is play your way. As a player continues to advance through the story and into the end game, they'll unlock a ton okay. of brand new activities that provide Waiting. meaningful progression, no matter their play style. They gotta get through all. They gotta get through all the PR first. Be like, oh, we're so excited to get this. You got a lot of options. Blah. Then you're gonna get to end games. Be like, do this, this, or this. Players will be able to keep progressing in the narrative of the game. Alongside that, the whole team has worked on crafting a variety of different experiences. <laughs> play your way. Use this legendary, or you don't do damage. <laughs> we're going to have an entire we're so cynical now it's unreal offer, there's going to never be an absence of something to do after the player has finished the campaign there's a lot more game to go and participate in they gain access to a special what we call capstone dungeon that they have to complete once they're okay. able to this capstone dungeon they're going to gain access to the first world tier as you complete the world tier it will open up the opportunity for you to go into your next world tier that involves unlocking power. So wait, is there a capstone at the end of every world tier? So there's basically just like an Omega dungeon you have to do in order to just go to the next one? Loot, new items, and more advantages for your player to have a better opportunity to end the game. Whether you're a fan of dungeons, PvP... Okay, they said PvP. Chat, is there anyone... And I mean this honestly. Is there anyone who thinks Diablo PvP will be legitimately good at all? Like you're going to walk in, you're going to get like chain CC'd and you're, it's going to be complete hell. It is not going to be fun at all. Me, she's, she's deep into some copium chat. Don't even listen to her. ARPG PVP is garbage. Well, ARPG PVP isn't garbage. Just the fact that like, there's so much ARPGs is a genre that's built around breaking the game and having and trying to create a competitive PVP side of the game. That's balanced on top of, oh yeah, by the way, the whole entire genre's basis is to try and make this not broken is impossible. We're just roaming around the world. There's a way to continue your Diablo adventure long after hitting max level. As your character continues to grow in power, you'll start with the skill tree and expand out into the Paragon system. Paragon system? Waiting? A lot of the Waiting? the players make are grounded on skills themselves and the fantasies associated with those skills. The Paragon board is a place where we're allowed to have a... What the fuck is this board? The Paragon board will allow you to have a lot more depth. A lot more depth, a lot more customs. Oh, he just unlocked a legendary node. Okay, wait, wait, wait. I'm going to put this in 0.25 real quick, yeah? Okay, plus five strength, plus five ints. So it looks like there's just a bunch of normal... You do 5% increased damage for each nearby enemy that's CC'd up to 25%. Hey, isn't that rogue? They literally called it Cheap Shot? It looks like most of them are basic nodes, though. You see, you see how there's like these basic nodes that just give you plus five to a stat? And all of them are just plus five. And then if you if you look, there's just like these ones that are red and then blue, then legendary. It looks like it more complicated than it probably is. Because I think where you all where you're just gonna end up wanting to go is towards the fancy notes, right? You'd be like, oh, I want to go over here, and then you just go for it. Except you might take some of these roundabout paths to go there if you want something that like maybe you want more resist or stats or something. This is like the altar from Diablo 3. I didn't play this last D3 season. That's a big refund cost. Yeah, they said refund costs get really big in in-game. Like they said, you can respec like a couple times a day. But if you wanted to respec more than that, you should just make a new character. Because it'll cost so much gold that it would be absurd. Anyway, let's, uh, let's let them keep going. You can rotate the board so you can choose a different path if you're like, I want to do more strength. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> You can rotate the board so you can choose a different path if you're like, I want to do more strength. That's still so cool, though. These particular boons or glyphs, you can chart your path through it, and they're really a way for you to keep expanding your character. That is really cool. Uniquely yours. Similar to the Paragon boards is the. Current... That's so cool, but everyone. How are they spin the board just like Wilson? I didn't actually play Wilson after launch, so I don't know. But the how that stuff usually works is like. There will just be each side will probably have base stats and it'll be like, this is the inside and this is the strength side. And you just spin it. 
aspects of power. It's an in-game system that holds the aspects related to the character. You are able to complete a dungeon and they will have a chance to drop an aspect that you can pick up. And what this allows players to do is take items they're finding in the world and make them more powerful, turn them into legendary items. It's really special to discover what kind of playstyle really means the most to you. What they don't say, by the way, is when you get those aspects and it's guaranteed from the dungeon where you put them on an item, um, they said chance to drop. I don't think they are chance to drop. They, they've they been guaranteed. They were guaranteed in the beta. If you just did the dungeon, you got the aspects. And it was tied to the completion of the dungeon. Um, but the, the other part about it is when you actually do go from the aspect and you put it on an item, it, it low rolls. Like it'll give you the lowest roll possible every time. Well, in beta, they up the drop rates. Oh my god. Well, no, no, they said that for legendaries were triple drop rates, but they didn't they didn't say aspects weren't guaranteed. That's different. They have never said I don't think they've ever said uh the aspect is the codex of This codex thing, it used to be if you just did a dungeon you got the codex straight up. Game system that holds the aspects related to the character. You are able to complete a dungeon and they will have a chance to drop an aspect. They will have a chance to drop an aspect you can pick up. Okay, so apparently that is not deterministic. It is actual just you have to target farm a dungeon. Weren't these developers the same ones that were saying like, don't worry guys, dungeons totally change the further into the game you go. Act one dungeons aren't the end all be all and stuff like that. Right. And then to say the aspects are now a chance. So I will then have to go back and target farm those potentially just to get an aspect I want for my build. Kind of weird. What this allows players to do is take items they're finding in the world and make them more powerful. But the description says by completing that dungeon, it can't be random. Oh, well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like this could be from the beta. And so maybe it changed. Like the developer is saying there's a chance. And then in the beta was guaranteed. That is the discrepancy. That's what we're talking about. So we think, we items. think, and you gotta remember, people were memeing about it in chat a minute ago being like, well, they increased the drop rates in the beta. Maybe they just made them guaranteed in beta. And then actually on release, it won't be guaranteed. It's really special to discover what kind of play style really means the most to you. That'd be silly. I know. That's why I think it's a, I, Every I hope that they're just, you know, misspeaking. Part of Sanctuary is fulfilling and satisfying. Dungeons in particular are really close to my heart. Nightmare Dungeons are going to give the players the opportunity to experience a dungeon that they might have already experienced in their past playthroughs. They'll enter the dungeon with a found sigil that alters the playstyle and the intensity of the dungeon. Why are the captions so high? More difficult and they have additional off. objectives and then they also have affixes which add a degree of difficulty for you and your group to work through. The problem is... One of my favorite affixes that you can find in Nightmare Dungeons is actually called... Help. Drag them down, streamer. Holy fuck, I'm a boomer. Thank okay. you. Occasionally, these portals will open up throughout the area that will just pour out different monsters that aren't native to that region for you to also be dealing with while you're trying to handle it. I never actually have captions on anytime on YouTube. I only have it on for stream. <laughs> so I never... I don't know anything. So... Okay, wait, wait, wait. Back up. Let's talk about the affixes before I got distracted. One of my favorite affixes you can find in Nightmare Dungeons. One of my favorite affixes that you can find in Nightmare Dungeons is actually called Hellgate. Occasionally, these portals will open up throughout the area that will just pour out different monsters that aren't native to that region for you to also be dealing with while you're trying to handle everything else inside the dungeon. There's over 120 dungeons to play through. Isn't that the classic Diablo Path 4, of Exile? Any yeah. one of them can become a Nightmare Dungeon. By finding a Nightmare Sigil, and then Abyss League. There's the all ARPG things in space. Listen, all ARPG mechanics chat and seasonal mechanics 99% of the time turn into how can we spawn more mobs on you but make it kind of cool. And so there's things like Breach and there's things like Abyss and there, you know, there's stuff like that. But that's because people just want to like have more stuff to like pull, like roll down with their build, right? So it's, it's cool. Difficult. It's going to add a little bit of a twist of flavor on your particular dungeon. Uh, also, the Nightmare Dungeons, and they said there's Nightmare Sigils and you plug it in and the, there's affixes and stuff. What they're describing is exactly maps from Path of Exile. You basically get a little sigil and you add your own affixes to the dungeon and you get more loot. <laughs> That's it.
There's some targeted activities in Diablo 4 that suit what you're feeling in the mood for. The force of hell are starting to have more influence in certain parts of Sanctuary in the vast interconnected overworld of the experience. And as the players are going into Helltide areas, you're going to find even more powerful monsters. And by killing them, they'll be able to gain these special shards they can take to go and use to purchase these big rewards that are available at these caches that are found littered throughout Helltide areas. The sky darkens and the rivers run red, meteors fall from the sky, and the monsters get harder. So this you is... want to create new experiences for the players. There's one I really like called Whispers of the Dead. Is this farming you... public events to get a currency to buy items? Gets from the Tree of Whispers. The Tree of Whispers is grim and a little gruesome, but it's also something mystically haunting and kind of beautiful. The tree has a little bit of a grudge against our players and it would like for them to go serve its needs. So you're going to go serve these bounties, gather different rewards, different items and bring them back to the tree in hopes that it can exchange you something really meaningful maybe yeah so i think it's a so it looks like a zone currency where basically you just go do public events and you get stuff and you turn it at the tree right isn't that isn't that basically what it sounds like you're gonna it's like kadala but on a tree and not an act and not the npc go to the there is one crashing material in the beta that was described to be only available in a helltide event well, yeah, but they, they seem like fancier versions of public events to, fa to farm. Yeah, public events, we farm oblongs, whatever they're called. Yeah, that I mean, it's like a different type of currency, but different kind of zone. It, it, this just gives me big vibes from other MMOs and stuff like that, where they have different currencies sometimes based on the zones you go into, so that these would be considered like the end game currency. Then you have like the leveling one type of thing. Peeks and take out some werewolves that are rampaging in the town. They're contained activities that you can do alone or in a group. We really wanted to create variety for people to be able to spend time where they wanted to in the world. It's very cool the way it's been put together, and I can't wait for people to see it, to be honest. I think this is going to be PvP. I want to watch this one more time, though, again. This public. Interconnected over in the mood for the force of hell are starting to have more influence in certain parts of sanctuary in the vast interconnected overworld of the experience and as the players are going into helltide areas you're gonna find even more powerful monsters they exist concurrently you still get oblongs whatever they gamble and you get this for the source of gear that's what i mean is like i i really do think and by killing them they'll be able to gain these special shards they can take to go and use to purchase i do think it's two it's obviously two different things i just think that these sound like in-game and the, and the other ones were leveling darkens and the rivers run red meteors fall from the sky and the monsters get harder we really want to create new experiences i actually really like open world content There's diablo really though like it sounds weird i know a lot of people don't even like the the words open world content in Diablo 4 but I, I mean stuff like the world boss and things like that I actually really enjoyed I think stuff like that is just cool you're gonna go up to the fractured peaks and take out some werewolves that are rampaging in the town they're contained activities that you can do alone or in a group it's we fun really to fight with randoms variety for people to be able to I'm a, I'm a little more biased because it was actually just really enjoyable to do the world boss and just watch like every it'd be like the random first time world boss was like I'm gonna kill the ball so then they run up this and really get one tap Time where they and it was always making me laugh it's very cool the way it's been put together and i can't wait for people to see it to be honest this gonna be pvp in diablo 4 we have a focus on the world of sanctuary and there are parts oh of that okay never mind that we call the fields of hatred where lilith's presence in sanctuary has begun to seep through and manifest these poisonous areas throughout the world when players go to these regions they get to engage in player versus player conflict these it is pvp Oh no, dude. Opportunities for the player to collect shards. But there is a little bit of a catch. In order to get these shards back to town, you will need to purify them. Oh my god, are you you guys doing an extraction shooter in fucking Diablo where I have to go to a sp certain spot on the map and purify them so I can technically extract my loot? Other, other players will definitely know that you're attempting to purify your shards. So you'd better be prepared. Oh my to god, it is. To be playing any PvP it's just dark zone. Yeah, it's just everyone this is just the this is just the dark zone from division is it not where you where there's going to be an area of the map that will occasionally be pvp enabled and then you go in and you kill mobs and other players you get loot and you extract it and the the loot that you're extracting in this however instead of giving you direct loot they give you a currency because they want to give you the currencies so that way you can target farm how much you want to bet it's going to be exactly like the tree thing over Maybe okay. here where you get your currency and then you get to go back and choose a reward of like do you want one-handed weapons boots or gauntlets because in diablo 4 you need to upgrade certain slots 
So they're giving you currency so that way you can target farm. And it's... <laughs> and it, oh, God. Interesting cosmetic. But everyone knows PvP is going to be a nightmare in this game. There's no way. I, I, have, I have the most pessimistic take on PvP, which is just I cannot possibly see it being truly good or exceptional in a Diablo game. There is no possible way. It will not be the most broken, horrible PvP in existence. Items and rewards. It's a place for any PvP and be prepared that you might lose some stuff in the meantime. Once they've got yeah, you lose your shards. They can take these, go back to nearby towns to sell them and then use that to buy a whole bunch of- Oh yeah, and what do you know? They took, they showed the screen here. Yeah, you get to buy and gamble here. Is this not just PvP Kadala? like interesting cosmetic items and rewards it's a place for people who really love pvp and want to still get loot and still increase their character's power if that's the way they want to play they can so how does that work with regards to gear in these pvp zones chat like if i am just someone who has because they specifically say this is supposed to be the progression for pvp players in diablo 4 Right, that's that's basically what they just said there at the end. Like, if you are someone who wants to PvP all day, every day, and still get gear and make your character more powerful, you just do this, you get shards, and then you just turn them in and you're more powerful now. Um, which means you don't have to do it. But it, it's also going to be really funny if they end up in a, a Division type of situation because it is, it reminds me very much of the Division, right? And the reason why the Dark Zone was so compelling as like a, a farming slash in-game piece of content chat was specifically because in Division, like you, if you wanted to farm gear really, really fast, you went to the Dark Zone. It says all rewards are only cosmetics. They don't say that. They say that the exact These opposite here. But the shares will be your shards. They say that exactly right here. A whole bunch of like interesting cosmetic items. They say interesting cosmetic items and rewards. People who really love PvP and who still want to get loot. And increase their character's power. It's cosmetics and power. It's both. They'll increase their character's power. If that's the way they want to play, they can launch is just the beginning one of the things we're really focused on is creating a living breathing set of updates for players to engage with after the game has gone live it's really just going to be a way to keep coming back and experiencing more diablo 4 in fresh ways we're really eager to hear all of your experiences and just enjoy the entire story with you all i mean i'm still looking forward to d4 but it's going to be very 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 interesting this zone in particular because what i was trying to point out earlier was the dark zone and division had this issue where people who didn't really want to PVP felt like they had to go there to get loot fast because it was one of the best places to farm loot. So no matter what, the PVP side of the game is always going to be pretty niche compared to the PV side of the game. And therefore Blizzard's going to have pressure to always ensure that this zone is never the most, like the fastest way to farm in the game. It's always just going to be like, this is an okay way to get gear if you enjoy PvPing. But the main goal is to PvP and get gear as a side grade. Because otherwise, if all of the PV players feel that they have to be pressured into going into this PvP area to get loot, they're just going to quit the game. Then no one wants to do that. And it's it always happens that way. So it's going to be very, very interesting. So like the Destiny Dilemma. Destiny does that, but Destiny isn't nearly as bad, I think. Like in Destiny, you can kind of ignore them. Um, but Destiny... I guess the, what would be the biggest equivalent there? Like Iron Banner, maybe? A back? I don't even know if that still gives power. It's back when I was playing D2, like a year or two ago. Um, Iron Banner would give you like a crap ton. And so that would give you a million pinnacles. The Trials, I don't know if, I, I don't know enough about D2's current meta to say how, you know, pressured people feel about going into Trials to farm for weapons and stuff. Uh, usually back then it wasn't really that important. There was always a ton. And also Destiny is a little bit different because it doesn't scale nearly as hard as something like an ARPG does. I'm just very curious how they're going to do gear scaling in PvP. Because right now in Diablo, like if I'm fully geared and I'm against someone who's not, I don't do, I don't just like do a little bit more damage. Like, oh yeah, I go, yeah, do 10%. No, I do like 500 times their damage. I can just probably walk up and one shot them. So this is going to be, this is going to be interesting. I don't know how they're going to do this. Maybe there's just no... The, the best way to do this type of thing, by the way, is usually how Lost Ark do, does it in other games that have significant item progression, which is say, okay, in PvP, 
Everyone is normalized. There's no stats, no gear, no bullshit. But the problem is lots of players actually enjoy stomping other players. And so they'll actually go online and be like, why does my gear not matter? I can't one shot everyone. Wah. And then, you know, th there is actual legitimate reasons to say that type of thing too, because typically players play these games for, for, for progression. And so if they don't feel this form of progression in PVP, it's like, oh, cool. It's got all this fancy gear, but now I have to go back in PVP and I didn't really get any of it. They're like, what's the point? So I get it. It's like a little bit of both. A new character, can I even comprehend what a fully spec'd out character is doing? They just walk up and the world explodes. Yeah, there's there's a huge mix of lots of things, but we'll see. I mean, so let's sum this video up then. We have, at the end of every world tier, there is a capstone dungeon, which you have to beat to go to the next world tier, right? Hopefully with a cool boss, because I think there's only five world tiers or something. And then on top of that, you have... We're just roaming around the world there's a way that you're a fan of dungeons is the codex of power it's dungeons they show off of the codex where apparently they said that it's random which makes no sense we'll see um over here we have random affixes so it's like affixes plus path of exile style maps in diablo 4 are going to be your equivalent to dungeons by finding a nightmare, nightmare sigil. sigils, which give debuffs on the map and give you more and loot, which AKA fight. maps, combined with affixes, which are just M plus from WoW. Really then you have public them. events where you go farm public events and you turn in currency, yeah, you, you turn in the currency and then you can target farm stuff like this. And then the last end game area are going to be the PVP area, which basically you walk up, you PVP people, you get shards. You then have like a division style dark zone where you extract it to actually save the currency and then it's after really you get the currency you get to go out and you spend it and gamble it just like pvp kadala so gonna be interesting can i for the dgens to find the meta builds and then wait for 80 percent of the player base to use one build smile in pvp it's just gonna be probably non-stop cc I, it'll be I, i'm very pessimistic because i've never really seen an arpg do pvp particularly well the one game that did it pretty well was probably lost ark from my experience but even lost ark was like they're so niche that most people don't actually enjoy them that much so we'll see outside of that though so does this mean then that your entire end game experience comes down to you're just going to be essentially dungeon spamming and public event farming to get currency and if you want to you can go pvp again to get a different type of currency and otherwise most of your time if you're just a pv player are going to be two things which is getting gear via dungeon spamming and nightmare sigils and then going and finishing your world tier capstone dungeon so that way you can advance to the next world tier and keep just do that all the way up is dungeon spamming bad though it's diablo these so the main reason that people are scared about dungeons in diablo 4 is because dungeons in diablo 4 and the first look of what we had about them in act one are so bad there's situations where like it'll tell you things such as oh yeah go kill every single mob in this dungeon and it's like den of evil from diablo 2 but the map is 10 times the size and then you have to run for literally three minutes back to the start of the dungeon to get one mob you killed and then run all the way back to get the loot and that type of backtracking was extremely consistent. Like if you just missed slight things and it was not just that type of objective, but other ones too, like, oh yeah, I need to go, uh, you know, get these rocks and put them on these pedestals. But you forgot to get the rock back there. You got to run all the way back and then run all the way forward. And there's, it just didn't feel like it was designed very well in comparison to other games. It just made no sense because usually, I mean, if you compare it to, if you compare it to something like a Rift, even in D3, Right, like you just held W, and then the boss spawned on you. That that was kind of it, right? I don't. Matter. I'm trying to remember. I didn't. It's been a while since I played Diablo three, but I don't remember running into issues like that. Like, oh yeah, I got to go backtrack for five minutes of not maybe not five minutes of walking, more like two. Probably the longest was probably like a couple minutes. Um, but even a couple minutes feels so weird in a game where you know ARPGs are generally designed around I teleport forward on the screen I'm like full screen clearing and like blasting tons of mobs you're like oh crap guys forgot to pick up that little orb thing gotta run back and they're like yep, yep, gotta run back for two minutes I'm going I'm going I'll be right back team and the the funniest thing actually is going to be when you have groups because these dungeons in act one at least act one dungeons were so big that in groups the speedrunner strategy is going to be that every single player like splits up hard and then you have one player go to the end and just wait 
And then that because travel time between different objectives is so long that it's actually better for everyone to split up and then everyone just teleports to town and teleports to the player rather than like try and speed run together or do anything else because it's 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 nuts. It's gonna be it's gonna be crazy chat. Yeah. Either way though, I am still pretty excited for Diablo 4. Like, I mean, I know they just posted this five minutes ago. We'll see what people think. All the Diablo and ARPG turbo nerds in particular are very uh you know, they get very angie. I don't know how else to describe them other than angie. They get very particular about how they like their video games. But yeah, overall, still excited for D4. Just a little hesitant sometimes.